Ebenu shalom alechem. Ebenu shalom alechem. Ebenu shalom alechem. Ebenu shalom 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 alechem. Ebenu shalom alechem. Ebenu shalom alechem. Ebenu shalom alechem. Eidenu shalom, shalom, shalom aleichem. That's you, aleichem. Hey, everybody, I think you know who I am. My name is Andy Greenberg, and next to me is... Carol Greenberg. And how are we related, Carol? We're married. And... I'm your former fiancé. You're, you, you're my former fiancé, and God willing, she's going to continue to be my 40 fiancé, as very shortly we hope to celebrate our... 50th anniversary. And by the way, Carol, where were you when I was 16 years old and it was Passover? I was at your house. And what with were my you, picture book. You were, at my, you were at my house at the picture book. Right. So she's been uh, part of my satyrs since the age 16. And Carol, is it true or not true that the reason you accepted my proposal for marriage is because you liked the satyr at age 16? If you want to think so, then we'll go from there. Okay. So, it's you a know, little bit more than that. It's a little bit more than that, but if you didn't like my Seder, what would you have thought? I would have married you anyway. Okay. Well, there you go. So, welcome everybody to our Seder. We're going to be having a really interesting, we're going to sing, we're going to be jovial, we're going to learn. And by the way, the Seder that Carol and I are going to be presenting is unrehearsed. We don't have particular lines that we're going to be doing, except for maybe in the beginning but then you'll see, so it'll be probably improvisation and we'll all learn something during the Seder. So there are many things that we are asked to remember on Pesach. The first, of course, is our exodus from Egypt, which is why we are all here tonight. You notice Carol looking at me because she wants to do the second line. There, and, and, yet, yet, and yet, as we think back in our lives and our religious life, we remember this night for all our growth from childhood to adulthood. We remember when it was our time to ask the four questions, then all the years we sat around the table listening and singing the answers. And then in many cases, we were the ones leading the service. We remember our parents, our children, our grandchildren on these very special nights. And on behalf of Carol and I, we really appreciate the opportunity to have a Seder you know what we would rather prefer? What do you think we would rather We'd rather prefer? be in person. We'd rather be in person. And we're going to make some connections in tonight's Seder with what is going on in the world today, why we aren't together. And I think you'll be amazed at some of the connections between the two, especially when it comes to freedom, especially when it comes to slavery, and especially when it comes to what we're going through. So... Let's begin. Carol and I are going to do a little bit of a reading, and then we'll get right to the Haggadah. Come, celebrate with us on a joyous journey, passing from despair to rejoicing, from mourning to exaltation, from darkness to light, from enslavement to redemption. This is the Passover story. It is everybody's story with a message for every age. And by the way, Despair to rejoicing. Aren't we in despair today? We know one day we're going to get the all clear signal. And then what are we going to do? Rejoice. And isn't tonight about rejoicing? Tonight, of course, we're saying, why is this night different than all other nights? Well, there's two reasons. Reason number one? Is that we, only, we don't eat leavened bread, and we don't do this, and we do this. But reason number one is we're separated. Because, we're separated. Because of the coronavirus. And you know what's interesting? Over the years, Carol, there have been so many times that Jewish people have been forbidden to have a Seder. There were the pogroms, there was the Holocaust, there was the Spanish Inquisition, there were the Crusades, there were the Romans who were captured to Jerusalem, and they said, you may not practice. And in spite of that, just like we're doing this evening, over 70%, if not more, of all Jewish people, one way or another, are attending a Seder. And somebody asked me a question recently, why? Why do so many people go to a Seder 
even if they are secular, even if they don't go to synagogue or shul during the year. Carol, what do you think? Why do so many people do that? Tradition. Tradition. And I don't think that there's anybody, that one soul, that wants to stand up and say, ah, I'm going to break the tradition. I'm not going to go this year. It is part of us. It's in our blood. It's who we are. It what brings us together because we get involved in history and we get involved in freedom. And of course, the other reason is it's the only time during the year we have matzah. So that's why people come to the Seder. You believe that? I don't believe You that. don't believe that. By the way, when, you, when we chat, let's talk a little bit okay. louder, okay? When we are done, we should feel as if each of us were there and we were a part of the 600,000 who placed the blood over the doorpost of our homes so the angel of death would pass over and we would all leave Egypt together in the morning. And you know what? Yeah. Regrettably, I don't think there's any way, and I really wish this didn't happen as we all do, but I think because of what's happening and we're separated and when we're in our apartments and we're in our homes, we begin to feel like the Jews did. We don't have any freedom, do we? But can you imagine for a moment, just one moment, if all of this happened when we didn't have TVs, when we didn't have appliances, when we couldn't do any of the things that we're doing now. That's what the Jews went through. They had nothing. No entertainment, no socialization, nothing. They were slaves. And of course, our story comes with a book. What kind of a book? The Haggadah. So each and every one of us should have a copy of this Haggadah. I will tell you what page we're on. We will do the English, we will do the Hebrew, and we'll have some interpretations and discussions, and we'll be able to really feel as if we were there. So let's begin with the lighting of the candles, and we will begin with the lighting of the candles that is found this particular, hey, wow, this particular... Haggadah does not have the lighting of the candle. So I'm going to give Carol the lighting of the candles here from this Haggadah. Very interesting. There's something else I found that this Haggadah doesn't have. So Carol's going to light the candles. And here are the prayers. Barukata Adonoi, Eloheinu Melakolam, Asher Kirishano Bumitvotav, Vitivanu Lahaglik Ner Shel Yom Tov. Amen. And for those of us who attend the uh, Friday night services, you'll, and especially since the past three weeks, you notice something about these candles? They're actually staying lit. <laughs> They're actually staying lit. It's a miracle. Let's begin on page five. Let's begin on page five. On page five, we have the Kiddush, we'll do the Hebrew, and then we'll do the English so we understand it. Page five, let's begin. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri hagafen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher b'char banu mikol aham. Vurumamanu mikola shohun, the kit shanu bemits votahab. Vachi chain lano adonai leheno beahava, umadin le simcha. Chaguzmanim le sa sohun, et yom chaghamat sot haze. Zaman a chedu tenu mikra kodesh, zechelitziat mitrahim. Kivanu Bacharta, the Otanu Kidashta, Mikol Haamim, Umadehe Kachacha Besim Chavason, Hinchaltanu, Baruchata Adonai, Mekadech Israel, the Hazmani. We continue now back on page five as we pray together the English of the Kiddush. Page 5, the English of the Kiddush. 
on the line 10 on the bottom, and we continue in the English to the next page. Blessed are okay. you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and exalted us among all nations by making us holy with his commandments. Top of page 6. Some of you might have a little bit uh, different book in the English, but it's basically the same. With love, you gave us the festivals of happiness, holidays, and seasons of rejoicing on this day of the Feast of Matzot, the season of our freedom, which is a holy assembly in remembrance of the going out from Egypt. For you have chosen us from all peoples to make us holy with your festivals and in joy and in happiness. Praise are you who makes holy Israel and the festive seasons. We now turn to page 7, and on page 7 we have the prayer, it's either page, yeah, page 7, we have the prayer that, that begins with the uh, Shehechiano. It, to me, is one of the most important prayers that there are, because what does the Shehechiano mean, Carol? It's the welcoming of the season to light. Yes, it means that we have in fact lived to this day. And Shehechiano is found on page 7 on line 9. Baruch Atanai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shehechiano Vekiyamanu Vehigiyanu Lazman Hazeh and let's pray together on page 7, the English translation, in the middle of the page, beginning with the words, either blessed are you or praise are you. Praise are you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, who has given us life and sustenance and brought us to this happy season, L'chaim. Mm. Ah. Two things, by the way. You notice on uh, Passover, we drink white, red wine, that white wine. Carol, why do you think we drink red wine on Passover? Probably because it symbolizes the blood. Blood? Yeah, the blood. What kind of blood? Blood from the plague. Well, very close. It's not necessarily the blood from the plagues, but very close. It is blood. Whose blood? Jewish blood. Wow. It's Jewish blood that was spilled when we were slaves. It doesn't mean we were killed, but when we got whipped and when we got beaten. So the rabbis, when they started putting the Seder together, they said, should we make it red wine? Should we make it uh, white wine? Should we leave it up to the congregants and to the Seder goers which wine they want? No. They said red wine for that reason. Let's continue on page 7 as we begin our appetizers. As we all know, it is the springtime. So we take a uh, piece of parsley. Carol, here's the parsley. And we dip it in the salt water. And I think all of us have attended enough seders to remember why we dip it in salt water. Because it re reminds us of the tears that the Jewish people experienced when they were slaves. And by the way, Aren't we, in one sense or another, tearful for what's going we, on today? We are, because we're not free. Right we're not now. free today. And we know that we even have problems sometimes getting the vegetables. Because when we go to the supermarket, we're very careful about how we shop. We might have Instacart. Your meals, of course, are delivered to your room, so you don't necessarily have that issue. But I can almost think that uh, when they procure the food for you, there might be some issues. So we're all sad about what's coming what's going on but we all know that one day we will get the all clear which i'll talk about in a moment so on page seven we'll do the hebrew prayer and then we'll do the english and then we'll eat the parsley dipped in the salt water and the english Praised are you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the earth. Bon appetit. Mm. Carol, you make the best parsley. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> I worked really hard. I could tell. All right. I'm going to do something different this year because very seldom, excuse me for one second, very seldom on the Seder plate do we talk about the egg. We have the egg on the Seder plate, but no place in the Haggadah does it talk about it. And I think this year it has a special purpose that it didn't have the years before. Carol, any take a guess why we have the egg on the Seder plate? Uh, for rebirth. Rebirth. Very good. It's very close. It's actually representing the circle of life which is why in funerals, when you come back from a funeral, they serve eggs in, like this, to rec hard-boiled eggs, to show the circle of life. So why am I making a big deal out of it this year? I don't know. Because of what we're going through. Because right now, we're, we are experiencing confinement. We're experiencing things we don't want, just like the Jewish people did when they were slaves. But the circle of life says what? One day this too? Will be will pass. One day this too shall pass. By the way, you've heard that expression so many times. It's actually an original Jewish expression, tracing back all the way to King Solomon and some of the Psalms. So this too shall pass. So this year, this egg has two purposes for us to understand: the circle of life. That yes, eventually we're going to get the all clear. Let's now turn to page eight. And on page 8, we're going to talk a little bit about the Passover story. And I'm going to uh, ask Carol to point to the, the matzah. And I'm supposed to lift the Seder plate, but I'm just going to tilt it a little bit. And I'm going to sing on page 8, Halach Mania. And then on, on, the, uh, opposing, uh, on page 8 in the English, we'll read the, the English. Halach manaya di achalu, di achalu ahabtana be Arab mitrayim. Halach manaya di achalu, ahabtana be aharaha de mitrayim. In the English, let's read together the words that begin with This is the bread of affliction. This is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. All who are hungry, let them come and eat. All who are needy, let them come and celebrate the Passover with us. Now we are here. Next year, may we be in the land of Israel. Now we are slaves. Next year, may we be free. How appropriate. Yes. If you wonder why Carol was looking at my words, her English translation is a little bit different. Uh, I've got the revised edition. No. Uh, she has the revised edition, but maybe there were two, so whatever. But let me point to the line. Maybe somebody had too much wine when they were putting it together. Could be. Let me point to a line that is actually going to amaze you and shock you. It says, all who are hungry. I want you to listen to this. This is how I'm going to connect it to the virus. It is said that between January 1st and April 1st, approximately... Of this year. Of this year. Approximately 49,000 people in the world passed away because of the virus. The virus? The virus. Oh. The coronavirus. Oh. COVID-19. 49,000 people. Of course, today it's more, but you'll see why I'm going back to April 1st. We're all upset about that, as we should be. Because these deaths should not have happened. We're upset. But I want you to listen to this. Between that same time period, January 1st to April 1st, over 2 million people in this world also died. Not of natural causes. What do you think? Why? Because they were hungry. Starvation. Do we mourn for them? Do we hold news conferences about them? Do we memorialize them? Before I mention it, did you know about it? No. So where it says, all who are hungry, let them come and eat. Many people, and I understand, many people complain vehemently. Oh, the services are too long. The satyrs are too long. We got to eat. What's the matter with people? Hurry it up. I want you to think about something. 
if I was able to invite two million non-Jews who are going to die between April 1st and June 31st because of hunger, if I was able to invite them to this Seder, but they had to do one thing, sit through a Seder for two hours, what do you think they would do? They would jump at the chance. They would jump at the chance. And we many times, not necessarily us here, but we many times hear people say, oh, the Seder's too long, get on with it, I've been there before, I've heard it before, I grew up with it. But no, all who are hungry, let them come and eat. So after Passover, let's remember those folks that have nothing to eat. And the two million people who already passed away, and the six million people, two, four, six, who are still going to pass away due to starvation in this world, and will never hear a word about it when we get the all clear. We continue on page eight with Manashtana. Carol, what? who's the youngest one here? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. It's... Okay, here we go. Manishtana. Uh, not by much. <laughs> Manishtana, page eight. Manishtana halayla ze mikol halaylot mikol halaylot shebechol halaylot anu ochlin chametz umatza chametz umatza halayla ze halayla ze kulo umatza halayla ze halayla ze Kulo matza shebechol halelot anu oflin she ahar yirakot she ahar yirakot halayla ze halayla ze maror halayla ze halayla ze maror top of page nine. Shebechol halelot, ain't anu mat bilim. Afilu pa'am echad, afilu pa'am echad. Halayla haze, halayla haze. Shetei pa'amim. Halayla haze, halayla haze. Shetei pa'amim. Shebechol halelot. Anuoklin, ben yoshvin who they misubid, ben yoshvin who they misubid. Halayla haze, halayla haze, kulanu misubid. Halayla haze, halayla haze, kulanu misubid. We go back to page uh, eight. And I would ask Carol to read the four questions. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights we eat either leavened bread or masa unleavened. On this night, why only unleavened bread? On all other nights we eat herbs of any kind. On this night, why only bitter herbs? On all other nights we do not dip our herbs even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat our meals in any manner. On this night, why do we eat sit around the table in a reclining position? All right, so I'll give you some of the answers. They're number one on the reclining position because we are free. So we no longer have to sit up. And as you guys know, I teach school. And when we had Gregory at home, our son, and he was having dinner, did we let him slouch? Yeah, Really? <laughs> I might, I might have been traveling. I didn't know that. Really? But mo all right, we let him slide. But most of the time... Well, what's it? Most people don't sit up straight all but, the time. But if you go to proper school, right? What do they call that uh, when they teach you how to act publicly in social life? There's a school for that. Uh, I can't etiquette. Etiquette. To etiquette. Proper etiquette. Proper etiquette is to sit up. But tonight we can go like this because we're not slaves and we don't have to listen to anybody. Wait a minute. Do I have to listen to you? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, all right. <laughs> so that's one answer. And by the way, in case you didn't know, way back when in the times of the temple, there was a fourth question that is different than the one here. 
Now, wait a the question was, why do we have eating roasted the lamb? And why do if, we have a lamb bone? The lamb bone, and why is it roasted? And the answer, the, they took that out because in those days, we sacrificed the lamb. We don't do any more sacrifices, so the rabbi substituted it with this part about sitting up and leaning down. So let's go on with the answer. I'm going to sing a little bit on page 9, Avadim Hayinu, and then we'll read together, We Are Slaves, and then we'll continue on. Avadim Hayinu lepaho, lepaho b'mitzrayim, Avadim, Avadim Hayinu, Avadim Hayinu lepaho, Avadim Hayinu, Avadim Hayinu lepaho, we continue on page 9 in the English. The words that begin with, we were slaves, I'll, I'll begin. We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Eternal, our God, brought us out from there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. Now, if God had not brought out our forefathers from Egypt, then we, our children, and our children's children might still have been enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt. Therefore, even if we were all wise, all men of understanding, and even if we were all old and well-trained in the Torah, it would be, still be our duty to tell the story of the departure of Egypt. And the more one tells of the departure from Egypt, the more one is praised. So let me ask you something. When five years from now, three years from now, doesn't matter, when your kids are older, your grandkids are older, do you think that they're going to start to talk about, hey, where were you when we had the virus? What did you do? Were you at home? How did you occupy yourself? And I can almost guarantee you that your, that your kids, our son, will tell it to his kids. Of course, they're living through it. But the more important thing, his kids will tell who? Their kids. Their kids. And what will their kids do? Say, ah, Grandma and Grandpa, they told me stories about what they did during the virus. And this will go on for several generations because it's going to be written in the history books. And some parents and some kids will go to those who are still around and say, you know, Mom, Dad, I just came home from a history class. They told us about the virus. What were you doing? How did you do it? So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why is he telling me this story? You have any idea? No. The reason why, that's what the Passover story is all about. Handed down from generation to generation, and it is our story. And we do meet on Seder for the purposes of taking it from one generation to the other, which is why it is so important to have the kindle of the children at these satyrs so that they learn about history as your great grandkids and your great great grandkids one day will hear the story about what you and I did during the virus. So what I'd like everybody to do now just for a moment is I want you to think about what type of personality you have. What kind of personality? What kind of a guy are you or gal? I want you to think about that. Because it all comes down to four different personality types. Now, Carol, prior to retirement, what was your occupation? I was a uh, du assistant director of a child development center, and I was an, also the head of the art department. Mm -hmm. And before you became the assistant director, what were you doing? I was teaching. What, who were you teaching? I was teaching children. So we're going to describe four different types of children. And then at the end, I want, to, want you to tell me, is this representative of who these kids are? So here we go. Let's go to page uh, 16. I'm sorry, page 10. Pardon me. Pardon me. Page 10. We're going to talk about the four wise sons. Pardon me, the four sons. These four sons, by the way, excuse me, were first written about in the Torah. So, Carol, we have a choice. The first one, pardon me, is the wise son. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I would be wise in letting her. Go ahead. The wise son asked, What is the meaning of the rules, laws, and customs which the eternal our God has commanded us? 
You shall explain to him all the laws of Passover to the very last detail about the Apicomen. Now, they have the contrary son or the bad son. Which one of us should play that? I'll let you have it. I accept it. But you know what? The bad and the contrary are two different things. Well, let's Con see. Contrary means, you know, the opposite of. And bad is something, a different meaning entirely. Oh, okay. So if someone doesn't believe in the Passover story, is it contrary or bad? Well, it's in a matter of opinion. And yours? Contrary does not, not mean that it's bad. So the Hebrew says rasha. The, which really means, trans, translated, literally, means bad. Oh. In this English translation, at least the book I have, they took the word bad out and they put the word contrary. Okay, let's not uh, split hairs. The contrary son asks, what is the meaning of this service to you? What does that mean when he says to you? Saying he excludes himself because from the group he denies a basic principle. You may therefore tell him plainly, because of what the Eternal did for me when I came out from Egypt, I do this. For me, and not for him, had he been there, he would not have been redeemed. Is that true? Probably. Yeah. The, the commentaries in the Torah and the Torah itself says, anybody who did not believe in the Exodus, even at that particular time, or didn't believe in was God, not saved? was not saved. Is that fair? God had a plan to get them out. If he didn't believe it, he didn't get out. Hmm. Interesting. So, let's see what the next son is. The simple son. The simple son. So the simple son, go ahead, take it. The simple son asks, What is this? To him you shall say, With a strong hand the eternal brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. There you go. What's going on here? What is this stuff? Now, he's not wise, nor is he contrary. He just doesn't, doesn't understand. understand. And the last one is a son who does not even know how to ask a question. You must begin for him as it is written in the Torah. You shall tell your child on that day, this is done because of what the Eternal did for me when I came forth from Egypt. For me! That's why we're always saying we should feel as if we were part of it. So Carol, we just reviewed four different sons. Are these representative of preschool children? Uh, I would have to say they are. They are, aren't they? They are. So the Torah was the first book ever written that actually psychologically profiled people. And you know what? Each and every one of us in Judaism represents at least one of these. Because sometimes there are basically three types of people. There are those people that make things happen religiously. There are those people that watch things happen. In other words, they see things, they watch them, they don't participate in, in them. And what's the third one? People who have no idea what's going on. People have no Nothing. idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. And don't we look at Judaism in, in one of those with one of those filters? Hey, I'm part of it. I make it happen. Hey, I watch other people walk to shul or go to shul or, or, or do Hanukkah or do some of the holidays. And then you have the others say, what the heck is going on? I didn't even know it was a Jewish holiday. Not only did I didn't know it was a Jewish holiday, I didn't know that there are Jewish holidays. There's a lot of people like it. Doesn't mean they're right or wrong, not being judgmental. But it does reflect it. But then you say, well, who's the one that doesn't know how to ask a question? You go back to the same thing, what's happening right now with the virus. There are wise people who say, wow, tell me more. How do I prevent myself from getting this disease? And how do I prevent others from catching it? Would you agree? I agree. And who would the bad people be or the contrary ones? The people that are not listening. They don't care what's going on. They don't care. They're not following the right instructions. Yeah, the ones that are not social distancing. The ones that are not following directions. And like two or three weeks ago, the ones that congregated at the beaches because they felt they had the right to, and this had absolutely nothing to do with them. And then there were some of us who say, what's going on? There is. Fortunately, we have the media, and we're not going to talk about who's right, who's wrong, but the fact of the matter is, there is a virus, and this represents who we are today. Now, what I'd like everybody to do, so I want you to listen to me very carefully, because I'm going out of the Haggadah, so how did this whole story start? 
started with Abraham, started with Isaac, started with Jacob. Jacob had sons. One of them they didn't like because he was a big shot and he said, hey, I'm better than you guys. They threw him in a pit and when they threw him in a pit, what happened? He got picked up and he became a slave. And by the way, remember I said earlier the bread of our affliction? Isn't bread, uh, matzah, really the bread of our freedom? It is. It is the bread of our freedom, but it's also the bread of our affliction because that's the only thing that we could eat. Well, yeah, but it's still it's still part of the uh, freedom. So why affliction? And we didn't have and we because we remember that we didn't have time. We didn't have we time. We didn't have time to let the bread rise. Right. That's why we eat that. Yes, but this also could be called either way. But the real reason it's called the bread of affliction is because after Joseph was thrown into the pit, you know what the other brothers did? They they broke bread. Oh, they did. As Joseph was sitting there in the pit. Screaming, let me out, let me out. And they had all kind of snakes. Uh, Boy, some people I wouldn't say. want to be in that family. No, and that's why with the bread became the bread of affliction. So just, just to let you know. So anyway, so Joseph goes down there. He's put in slavery. And he, he's put in jail, I should say, because he wouldn't make love with some lady. Of course, he probably never saw the TV show Two and a Half Men because that guy fooled around with everybody. So he didn't fool around with somebody's wife, they, and the wife accused him of doing it. He put him in jail, and then, to uh, make a long story short, he became the viceroy, the second in charge of Egypt. And then there was a famine in Israel, and then when there was a famine in Israel, the brothers came down with 70 people, and Joseph was the one that not only saved Egypt and saved the world. So then what happened to the brothers and the 70 people and Joseph? The king gave them, the pharaoh, at the time was a good pharaoh, gave them a piece of land, gave them riches, and what did they do? They multiplied, and they became great, and they became mighty, and the old Pharaoh died, and a new guy came in, and the new guy said, what the heck is going on around here? These Hebrews, they're different than other people. There's too many of them. I'm afraid of them. They're controlling the food. They're controlling the industries. Way too many. And if I ever go into a war, they'll probably fight against me. So what am I going to have to do? Curtail their activities. Curtail their activities and make them slaves. And that's why we were slaves. By the way, did we do anything wrong in those days? No. Has history repeated itself, especially here in the United States? When we came over as refugees, your, your grandparents, your parents came over as refugees. How much money did they have? Zilch. And within one and a half generations, what did, happened to the Jews? They became... Mighty. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, some people, I'll say mighty. They, they prospered. They prospered. And what's happening with anti-Semitism? The same exact thing that happened way back in Pharaoh's time. Too many of the Jews, kill them, get rid of them. They're way too powerful. They're way too mighty. Well, the good news is we are not letting that happen now. It did happen back in the Holocaust, no question about it. No question about it. But now we hopefully have put a stop to this. So now, what I'd like you to do, is I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to listen to me very, very carefully. Because I'm gonna tell you a story. I would like everyone to pause for a moment, very quietly. Think of yourself in garments made of rags, working hard, building massive cities, slave masters watching every move you make. You are allowed no rest, perspiration and pain being a part of everyday living. At the end of the day, you are thirsting for water. You have little food. You see your children doing the same thing your parents did year after year after year. They are going to be slaves to the Pharaoh. There is no money. There is no paycheck. There is no future. There is no hope. This has been going on for over 400 years 
years. We may open our eyes. So what did the Jewish people do? If we want, let's turn to page 13, on line 12, in the middle of the page. I'll do the Hebrew and then we'll read the English together. It's found in the middle of the page on line 12. The Nitz Akel Adonai Elohe Avotenu, Vaishma Adonai et Kolenu, Vayar et Anenu, the et Amalenu, the et Lachatenu. In the English. So we cry to the Eternal, the God of our ancestors, and the Eternal heard our voice. And he saw our affliction and our burden and our oppression. Carol? Yes. Have you heard? Have you heard? There is a rumor that soon we will be freed. Soon we will all be free. We will no longer be slaves. We will enjoy our family and lives. We will be allowed to worship our Lord, our God. The Lord our God has heard us and answered our prayers. Have you heard, do you believe that freedom is near? And that's exactly what the Jewish people went through. Exactly what they went through at the time of the coming, Moses coming, Moses starting with the ten plagues. And that's the exact same thing that we're hearing now. I'm going to do a little bit of discussion, but I'm going to ask Carol to get a glass of water and the red dye that she has already. Okay, good. I was looking for the big glass. Okay, that's why the small one. So the Jewish people were saying, hey, I heard this rumor. There's this guy Moses, and he's up there, and he's talking to the Pharaoh. He was going to be freed. But what did the Pharaoh say? No. So there were ten plagues. And we're going to look at these plagues as we flip to page 16. Page 16. And it is customary to take our cup of wine. And we're going to do each plague. And guess what Carol and I have? We have props representing each plague. So it is customary, if you've got the wine, to take your pinky. And as we do each plague, we will have the opportunity to take a bit of wine, put it on our Seder plate. We do that because... Even though we, these plagues were used to get our freedom, we do not want to always be happy because other people suffered. And of course, that's why we break the glass at the end of every wedding, because we also want to remember the destruction of the second temple. And that's why we dip, so that we recognize that people suffered. So... I'm going to do the Hebrew, and then we're going to do the English, and every time we do the English, we're going to show you a prop. Dam Svardeya Kinim Arob Dever Shechin Barad Arbe Choshek Makat Bechorot so, Carol, what was the first uh, plague? Blood. So I want you to imagine this cup of wine being the cup Nile River. Huh? Cup of water. Cup of water. What did I say? But sorry. Thank you. Cup of water. And what do you get? And what happened in the first plague? The water turned into Ooh, would blood. Would you like to drink that? Turned into blood. All right. So the second plague. We're on page sixteen were frogs frogs here we go froggies little froggies here we go and the third one was vermin being the insects yes the vermin and the third one the pardon me fourth one were the wild beasts what can get wilder than a dinosaur the wild beasts there we go the dinosaur the one in this bag right here the dinosaur the, of course now I'm not suggesting that there were dinosaurs at the time of the plague, but this is a wild beast we couldn't find anything else. And then after that was the pestilence. The pet the wild beast. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the yeah. pestilence. And then the boils. By the way, when I was a young kid, I had boils on the back of my neck. They were horrible. 
And then we had hail. Hmm. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Carol, do we like hail? We do not like hail. We had hail twice, and we had to replace our roof in Nebraska. Twice. Yeah, but whoa, 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 whoa. Who paid for the roof? The insurance company. The insurance company. Paid, but we don't so, like hail anyway. In the 25 years we lived there, we got two roofs for free, and the insurance company was kind enough to pay for it. Locusts. Locusts. All right. By the way, listen to this. Listen to this. You might think locusts are not plagues. Listen to this. In Iran, and I think some of you know this, two weeks before Purim, what happened in Iran? I guess you're going to say locusts. You got that right. There was a swarm of locusts, and right now parts of the world is being overrun by locusts. So don't say it can't happen again. And the next one, number nine, was darkness. Here you go. All right. Darkness. There we go. And, and the last one was the slaying of the firstborn. And when we take a look at these plagues, what the rabbis, which we're not going to read uh, this evening, what the rabbis talked about and spent a lot of time analyzing or trying to was how many plagues were there? Were there really 10? Were there 50? Were there 40? So they get into this whole discussion about how many plagues there were. And the fact of the matter is something very interesting, and that is, to me, it was a ripple effect. And I think the rabbis were right, but let me explain to you why. When you had the blood in the water, all right, big deal. Aha! But could you drink the water? No. Could you bathe in the water? No. No. Could you do ritual ceremonies in the water? No. Could the fish live in the water? No. So for every plague, there were outcomes. Ha! Huh. Let's talk about some of the others. In darkness, what was the problem in darkness? Couldn't find your way around. Couldn't find your way around. And you, people have to have light or they get depressed. Yeah, ooh, I never thought, never heard that yeah. one before. Never heard that one before. People have to have light. Light is brightness. Yes, and you can't see who you're talking to. And you know as well as I do, when you go into a movie theater and you can't see where you're going for the first couple of moments, how do you feel? Terrible. So, yes, every one of these plays, including the boils, had after effects. There were diseases. People looked ugly. Makeup couldn't do anything Not for them. Not only that, they're painful. They're painful. So for every one of those, there was a lot. Let's turn to page 19 for everybody's favorite song. What's everybody's favorite song? Dianu. Dianu. Exactly right. Dianu. And we're going to sing Dianu. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the Hebrew, and then I'm going to pause. But you have to listen to when I pause because I'm not going to pause after each stanza so that we sing Diana. So we'll do the first one, and then we'll see what, ha what happens. Ilo, ilo, hotzianu, hotzianu, mi mitzrayim, hotzianu, mi mitzrayim, dayenu. Everybody, can't hear you. Die, dayenu, die, dayenu, die, dayenu, 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 die, dayenu, die, dayenu. Dai dai hinu dai hinu dai hinu ilu asa ben shivatayim below asa ben belohayim ilu asa the belohayim below harag lanu et pukorayim ilu harag ben et pukorayim below natalanu et mamonam dai hinu dai dai hinu dai dai hinu dai dai hinu dai hinu dai hinu dai hinu dai dai hinu dai dai hinu dai dai hinu dai hinu dai hinu Ilu natana no et mona belo karana no edayam ilu karana no edayam belo ibra no betokho belo bekharava ilu ibra no betokho bekharava belo shikei tari no betokho. Good for you. Dai dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai enu dai enu ilu shakat tari no betokho belo sipak tari no be 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 bad ba arvim shana. Dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu. Die, die, hey, no, die, hey, no, die, hey, no. He looks at the exact enemy, but I'll be in Shabbat. He'll 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 be in Shabbat. Top of page 20. He'll be in Shabbat. 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 Die, die, hey, no, die, hey, no, die, hey, no. 
You knew that was coming, didn't you? Die, die, ain't no, die, die, ain't no, die, die, ain't no, die, ain't no, die, ain't no. Page 20, toward the middle of the page, line 9. How much more? And we'll, uh, we'll read responsibly. And I'll, have, I'll begin with how much more. How much more do we have to be thankful for the manifold and unbounded blessings of the all-present God? Carol? He brought us out from Egypt and executed judgment against them. We'll do one line at a time. And did justice to their idols. And slew their firstborn. And gave us their property. And divided the sea for us. And brought us through dry shod. And drowned our oppressors in it. And helped us for 40 years in the desert. And fed us manna. And gave us the Sabbath, top of page 21. And brought us to Mount Sinai. And gave us the Torah. And brought us into the land of Israel. And built for us the holy temple. Where we could atone for all our sins. Before we sing the last Ayinu, I got a problem with this prayer. Why? A big problem. Because it says after everything that every individual thing God did for us, we scream out, enough. So what does Dianu mean? It means enough. That means, you know, God, if you only did one thing for me, it would have been enough. If you only did this for me, it would have been enough. I'm not greedy. I don't want more. As I don't want much from you. Just give me a little bit, that's all. Is that true? No. And that is not representative of life, is it? Because generally speaking... When we get one, what's the expression you always have? If I give you a, a, a hand, you want the whole arm or whatever your expression is. Isn't that something basic? Like that. Something, like, something that. like that. Something like that. Something like that. Isn't that basically true? We get one thing, we want more. When the stock market goes up, do we, are we happy? Do we sell? Ah, I made money. No. What do we do? Call up our broker. We want more. That's greed. What this is really No, true. that's human nature. That's the point. Human nature is greed. So, yeah. mostly. So the point of the matter here is, let's get away with the greed. And I'll show you how this connects to what's happening right now in our life. What is the one thing we want right now? Freedom. Freedom. We want to get out of this mess. So we we don't want somebody telling us what to do. Don't want anybody telling us what to do. Just want to get out of this thing, right? Right? That's all we want. That would be enough. Well, yes, we want freedom, but we want the virus to go away. Yes. And never come back. We want the virus to go away, number one. Yes, and that would be enough. So the prayer here teaches us, let's not be greedy. When this whole thing is over, let's appreciate what we have. Because I can guarantee you, and I know I, sp I, I can speak for myself, I'm not going to speak for Carol, but there are many things in life that I have that are not necessarily materialistic. But things in my life that I have, that once in a while I take for granted, once in a while I don't feel thankful for and that's not right. And I think what this teaches us is whatever we have, feel thankful for it. Because guess what? In the past two months, it was taken away from us. And when we get it back, don't we want more? But we shouldn't. We should say, thank you for letting me be free. Thank you for giving me all my blessings. Thank you for allowing me to be where I am to make sure that I am not impacted by this horrible disease. Die, 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 We continue on page 21 as there's an old rabbi, Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbi Gamliel used to say, whoever does not explain the following three symbols at the Seder table has not fulfilled his duty. Pardon me. So what is the first one? Well, even though we didn't uh, do it in the Manashtana, we point to the Passover offering right here. The Passover offering on page 21. That which our fathers ate in the temple days, what was the reason for it? It was because the Holy One, praised be He, passed over our houses, our fathers in Egypt, as it is written, top of page 22, 
and you shall say, say it is the Passover offering for the Eternal, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and spared our houses. And the people bowed and the heads, people bowed their heads and worshiped. Sorry about that. I was actually going to my next thought and, and, and I lost it. So I have a question for you. And this is one for both of us. We're not going to enter into a discussion because it's fruitless as to did God, is God responsible for this virus? No, no reason to talk about that. But when it's over and we're free, are we going to thank God that we're free? Are we going to say a prayer, Shehechayana? Are we going to say or look up in the heavens or take a prayer book or whatever way we communicate with God if we do it all? And are we going to say, thank you, God, for letting me survive? Please have pity on the souls who didn't. Or are we just going to not do it? Because part of the Passover ceremony is, of course, talking about freedom. And a lot of the Seder, we'll do just a little bit of it, is praising God. Tough question, isn't it? Carol, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yes. Will you thank God when this is over? I will. But some people, I will, but some people might not because some people are, are very yeah, a little much, bit louder. some people are very much just of a scientific mind and they'll, they might think that it give credit to the people who got the vaccination, credit to the people who figured it out. And it's a combination of everything, but um, I do believe in a higher being, so I will personally. So I'll tell you something interesting. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, probably not. Statistics are very interesting. Why? Seder, uh, pardon me, service attendance, generally speaking in synagogues, aside from the Orthodox, is down. But yet a lot of conservative synagogues and a lot of reform synagogues, because you can't get to the building, they have virtual services. And what the data is beginning to show that on Friday nights, morning minions and afternoon and evening minions and Havdalah, more people are going to the virtual service, Jews, then actually at times went to synagogue. Because it's from the comfort of their home. The convenience sake. And maybe they, don't have any, maybe they don't have anything else to do. It's convenient. The yeah. other interesting thing is, because I've been going to these virtual things, and as you know, on Friday nights, I, 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 Carol and I prepare one for you, but no one ever complains that it's too long. I never heard anybody say it's too long. And I don't know if it's as a result of people returning to spirituality, whether it's a matter of convenience, or what? But the question then becomes, what do we do when it's over? Do we come to services more? Do we praise God more? Do we thank God more? That's an individual choice. But that's what Passover also tries to do, is reconnect us to Judaism. All right, let's continue on page 22. The matzah. What is this matzah that we eat? What is the reason for it? It is because there was no time for the dough of our ancestors to become leavened before the ruler of all, the Holy One, praise be he, revealed himself to them and redeemed them. As it is told in the Torah, and the dough which they had brought out from Egypt, they baked into cakes of unleavened bread. For it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt. By the way, in case you didn't know, any matzah that is over, I didn't finish reading, I have to before that, whoa, my bad. Because they were thrust out of Egypt, top of page 23, that they could not tarry, nor had they prepared themselves any provisions. So, when did the Jews actually leave? When do you think they left? When did they leave? Yeah, what time during the day? They left at night. What, when at night? So they wouldn't be seen. Yeah, but when? When? I uh, the Passover night. Midnight. 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 Yep. Yeah. And they left on the 15th of the month of Nisan. What's the big deal about the 15th yeah, of the month of Nisan? The Watch this. When you leave someplace in the middle of the night and you don't have street lights, what do you need in order to know where you're going? Direction. I don't know. You need light. You need light. You need light. Yeah, you need light. On the 15th of every month in the Hebrew calendar, when is the moon the fullest? Probably that time. On the 15th. So the Jews left on the 15th of the month of Nisan because... The moon was full, and it was radiant, and it set their path. 
All right, let's go to the next one. These bitter herbs which we eat, what is their meaning? They were eaten to recall that the Egyptians embittered the lives of our forefathers in Egypt, as it is written, and they embittered their lives with hard labor, with mortar and bricks, with every kind of work in the field, and all the work that they made made them rigorous. Well, they were tired, just like we said before. Let's continue now on page 23. I'm going to do one, three lines in Hebrew, and then we'll do the English. On the bottom of page 23, let's read together the English. We continue to the top of page 24. In every generation, one must look upon himself as if he personally came out of Egypt, as the Bible says, and you shall tell your son on that day, saying, It is because of that which the Eternal did to me when I went forth from Egypt. For it was not only our ancestors the Holy One prayed be redeemed. He redeemed us too. With, with them, them as it is said he, he brought us out from there that he might lead, lead us to and give us the land which, which he pledged to our ancestors our forefathers our yes forefathers. forefathers ah wow he pledged the land to our forefathers what land is that land of israel and we got it don't we let's keep it not without problems you're right but let's keep it let's keep it this time am yisrael chai we continue now on page 26. And Carol, what time do you think it is? Uh, I don't know. What time is it? What do you think we're going to do on page 26? It's time for? It's time to eat the, all the stuff on the, on the potato plate. But Bitter first. herbs and this and that. But time first we drink the wine. wine. What time is it? <laughs> page 26. But you see, you see, I can you see how you can okay. tell this is unrehearsed. That's because I was on page twenty-five. Well, I know, but I said twenty-six. Okay. Baruch Atah Nai Elohim Melech Olam Borei Bari Hagafen. In the English, praised are you, eternal, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. L'chaim. By the way. If you ever take a look at the word l'chaim in Hebrew, it means to life. But I don't know if you knew that the word l'chaim is plural. So it means everybody should have a good life, not just one person. All right. Now we wash our hands, and I'm going to take this bowl. It is customary that to take uh, the water, some people do it alternatively. Some people do it one, two, three. And one, two, three. Baruch atanai, elena melech olav, asher kirishan b'mitzvotah b'tzivanu, al netila ha'yadayim. Praised are you, eternal, our God, ruler of the universe, who made us holy with his commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of our hands. Now, isn't that something? Because that's what we're being told to do constantly now. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. Wash your hands, wash your hands. Yep, and by the way, you, you, you're on to something. It started out as a Jewish tradition because we said a prayer. Why do we wash our hands and say a prayer? Because the, the priests in the time of the temple did that. And that's, they did it the same way I just did by taking a cup and going it over three times. And they did that before eating. Now, interestingly enough, you, it, we're in a period of time in terms of virus. The whole world is supposed to wash their hands. But many of us have heard of the Black Plague of the 1300s. And I think you might have mentioned, might have heard me mention this, is that the Jewish people had twice the lifespan of the average citizen at, at the time. Therefore, they blamed the Jews for the Black Plague. But what they discovered years later was it had nothing to do with the Jews. Why did the Jews survive the Black Plague in higher numbers than anybody else? 
They washed their, their hands. They washed their hands. And they social distanced. So all of that comes from where we are now. All right, let's take a piece of matzah, everybody. Please grab a piece of matzah. And that reminds me, I can't believe I made this two mistakes. I made two mistakes, and I have to apologize to you. Oh, the afikomen? I did not take out the afikomen earlier, and earlier we were supposed to wash our hands without saying a prayer, and I just realized I forgot that. So please accept my apologies, and I hope you invite me back next year, but I certainly forgot. So, Carol, please, not yet. Close your eyes. I'm going to hide the afikomen. Well, I couldn't, yeah, we have to break the afikomen. Yeah, I'll break the afikomen. There we go. Now close your eyes. You remember this. If I don't, she doesn't find it, we don't eat dessert. Have you finished hiding it? Yes, open your eyes. Okay. So, sorry about that mistake. Here we go. Uh, Baruch Atadonai, page 27. Baruch Atadonai, lehenu melech olam, amotzi lechem, mehen ha'orhet. Praise are you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Baruch Atadonai, lehenu melech olam, asher kitshan b'misotav etzibanu, ala chilah ha'matzah. B'tei avon. Mm, very good. Don't you like matzo? Not really. No, you see that you say it all the time. Do you like matzo bride? Yeah. You like matzo farfa? I don't like matzo. Yeah, but yeah, I don't understand that. No, I don't like matzo. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't like matzo farfa. Oh. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but you like other foods with matzo. Say yes. Yes. Yeah, so do you like matzo? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, by the way, just a little a piece of information, very short. If you're, if you're making matzah, or whoever makes matzah, and they make it for more than 18 minutes, that means it's not kosher. It's not good, it's not good matzah. Maximum time for matzah is 18 minutes, which, by the way, what else is 18? Chai. Chai. And what does chai mean? Light. Light. And there you go. All right, let's go to the next one. Maror. Yes, the bitter herbs. Oh, I can't wait. Um, page 9. Baruch atarnai, lehenu melech olam, asher kitshan v'misodav v'tzivanu, ala chilahat maror. Praise are you, eternal God, ruler of the universe, who made us holy with his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of the bitter herbs. With the haroset. With the haroset. Oh, yes. I got to tell you. You know, well, I got to tell you, your haroset is always great. I can't tell them if I roasted is great. Here I talk about praise. I'm trying to praise her. If you won't let me praise her. Wait, you didn't say the prayer, did you? I did. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Darn good. All right. Next. We take uh, matzah and we put the bitter herb between it. We're just going to do the English. Page 11. Well, I'm sorry, not page 11. What's the matter? Page 27. And we... Jesus, jeepers! What did I say? Jeepers! Can you spare? Can you spare the matzo? What do you think? Like wow! All right, so we take the bitter herb. Thank you. We take the bitter herb. We put it in between, and we on the bottom of the page on page uh, twenty-seven. We say together, in remembrance of the holy temple, we do as Hillel did in temple times. We he put matzo and bitter herb together and ate them as a sandwich in, in order, order to observe, observe literally the words of the Torah. They, they shall eat, eat it with matzah and bitter matzah and bitter herb. Bateavon. Mmm. Bitter. Mmm. Mm. Take something to drink. All right. So we've done the hivotis, we've done the parsley, we've done the salt water, we've talked about the lamb shank, we've talked about the bitter herb, yep. we've talked about the egg. Yeah, and we talked about the Passover story. So now you're going to ask yourself what's left. 
Well, we're going to have a shorter second part. I know you guys have already eaten. So the first thing that uh, I guess we have to do before we continue with the service is Carol has to find the Afikomen. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Carol, what do you think with the Afikomen is? By the way, I'm sorry. You're entitled to a gift if you get the Afikomen. My what do you only, want? My only gift is I want the virus to go away. Ooh. All right. Thank you. All right, so where is the Afikomen? Probably somewhere there. Here? Yeah. Nope, wrong. Ha, ha. Yeah, right there. No, where? No, not there. Ha, right. ha. Go find it. We here? Yeah, yeah right. Ah, ha. She's right. Uh, we can continue with the service. If you're wondering how much longer do I have to go through this, probably about 16 and a half minutes. And if I'm a minute over, please don't be that upset. All right. Since we already ate... Uh, we're going to do the blessing for the food. Page 29. Page 29. The Brichat Hamazon. We're not going to do the whole thing, just in one paragraph. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hazon et HaOlam Kulo Bituvo Vechein Bechesed Barachamim Hu no chen lechem lechol basar Ki leolam chasto Uktu vo hagadol Tamid lochasolanu, the aliasolanu, mahazon leolam va ed, va avur shimbo hagadol, ki huzanum farnes la hakol, umechiv la hakol, umechil mahazon, lechol briotav, asheh bahara, baruchatodonai, hazan et hakol. And now on page 29, we pray together in the English the words that begin with, Praise are you. Praise, Praise are you, you, eternal our God, God ruler of the universe, who sustains the whole universe with his goodness, with grace, loving kindness, and mercy. He gives food to all, for his mercy endures forever. In his great goodness, he never failed us with sustenance, and may he never fail us forever and ever. For the sake of his great name, it is he who provides for all, sustains all, and is beneficent to all, preparing food for all his creatures whom he created. Praised are you, eternal, who provides food for all. If you've never read the English translation of the Birkata Mazon, it really now has some meaning. We turn to page 32. Page 32, line 13, the Brachat HaMazon ends with a prayer for peace. Oset Shalom. Oset Shalom Bim Raman Hu Ya'ase Shalom Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael V'yemru, V'yemru, Amen Ya'ase Shalom, Ya'ase Shalom Shalom Aleinu, the Alkol Yisrael, Yaase Shalom, Yaase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, the Alkol Yisrael, the Yemaru, Amen. Carol? Yeah. Guess what time it is? It's time for the third cup of wine. Hey, good for you. Page 33. The third cup of wine. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Boreh Ari HaGafed Praised are you, eternal, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. L'chayim. Carol. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know who might come through the front door? I think it could be Elijah. Yep. Now his cup is ready. His like cup him. is ready. Now I got to tell you something. The uh, the fact is that some people say I'm not one of them, but I'm only relaying. I'm not trying to influence or do anything else. Elijah, of course, it represents the coming of the Messiah. And before the coming of the Messiah, there was some Jewish uh, text and theories, it's all theory, about what I'm about to say, 
that beforehand there'll be lots of disease and destruction and war in the world, and then Elijah comes. I'm not saying this is the first part. I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm just saying what some of the texts say. So I saw something on YouTube the other day. I didn't really watch the whole thing. It wasn't my cup of tea, but it was a rabbi that said the Messiah is coming. And I'm sure that's what he was talking about, especially Eliyahu. But the fact of the matter is we do want peace in this world. So uh, I'm going to sing the song Eliyahu Hanavi. You do not have it in your Sido, in your uh, Agadis. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishmi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Agiladi, Bimhera Beyameinu, Yahago Eleidu. Imashiach ben David, Imashiach ben David, Eliyahu Hanadi, Eliyahu Hatishmi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi. May Elijah the prophet come to us quickly in our day, bringing the time of the Messiah. By the way, Carol, is this the only time of the year that we sing the song Eliyahu Hanavi? No, I think we sing it during Shabbat or after. During Very close. The Havdalah. Havdalah, exactly Havdalah. right. Havdalah services. We also, every week, for those that attend a Havdalah service, you'll also hear Eliyahu Hanavi. Now, in modern times, we also recognize somebody else who played an extremely important part in the Passover story, and that is Miriam. Miriam. And who is Miriam? Miriam was Miriam was the person that uh, put Moses out of the water. Yeah, very good. And did they have a relationship? Um, Actually, Miriam put him in the water. But yeah, but is, there a, is there a relationship? That was his sister. Yes, that was that's his sister. His sister. So we only have a, a cup for Miriam, and I'd like Carol to read this from a different Seder. Please listen carefully as it is reflective upon Miriam. Miriam's cup represents the living waters that sustained the Jewish people after they left Egypt. According to Midrash, as a reward for Miriam's wisdom and caring, God provided a moving well of water which followed the people throughout their wanderings in the desert. Miriam's well was said to have healing powers that refresh their bodies and also renew their souls. We call on Miriam to guide us on our journey to repair the world. We turn now to page 39. And in traditional satyrs that are extremely long, 39? because uh, 39, 39, 39. Um, satyrs that are, that are really long, what they do in the second part of the service is they do something called the Hallel, where they praise God. And why do they praise God? Because they recognize God's role in freeing the Jewish people, which is why I asked the question earlier, for those that are going to be freed at the end of this uh, period of the virus, will we praise God? Judaism always instructs us to do so. But if we don't want to, that's okay, but it is a ceremoniously a custom and tradition to praise God. So I turn, please turn to page 39, and uh, on page 39, if you have the, some of the numbers on the left side in the English, it'll say page uh, uh, line 14. And uh, I'll, I'll read the English. Some of the books just have a couple of different words. All your creations, O Eternal, shall praise you. Your pious servants, the righteous who do your will, indeed all your people, the house of Israel, with joyful song, shall give thanks, bless, praise, glorify, extol, revere, sanctify, and enthrone your name, O King, for unto you it is good to give thanks, and unto your name it is proper to sing praises, for you are God from everlasting to everlasting. Praised are you, eternal King, extolled in praises. We now turn to page 41. 
And on page 41, we have the first of, I believe, the three or four songs that are all related to the Seder. And then we'll do these songs, and then the Seder will be over. So I'm going to hit the time that I said I would. So this is called Kilo Nae, Kilo Yae. I'll do just one or two verses, and then we will continue on page. Uh, uh, when this is and on pa uh, page forty-one, the last sentence. Kilo Nae, Kilo Yae, Adir Bimlucha, Bachur Kahacha, Kidudad Yomrulo, Lecha Ulecha, Lecha Kilacha. Lecha af lecha, lecha adonai hamam lecha, ki lo nae, ki lo yae. All the way to the bottom of the last paragraph. Ana bin lucha, podeka chala, tzadika yomru la. Lecha u lecha, lecha ki lecha, lecha af lecha, lecha adonai hamam lecha, ki lo nae, ki lo yae. On the bottom of page 41, the line that begins with the, the last paragraph, humble in majesty. Humble in majesty, Redeemer, Redeemer indeed, indeed. His, his righteous right sing to him. him. Yours alone, O God, is the world's sovereignty. To him it is fitting, to him it is due. We continue now on page 42 as we have finished praising God and Carol. Time for the fourth cup of wine. Time for the fourth cup of wine. Baruch Atanai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Ari Hagafen And the English, Praised are you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. L'chaim. Hmm. That's good. We continue now on page 43. And on page uh, 43 in the English, where it says conclusion of the Seder, let's all read together. Don't run away after this. We've got two more songs, three more songs coming up. Really good songs. Don't run away. Here we go. Conclusion of the Seder. Let's read together. Ended is the Passover Seder according to custom, statute, and law. As we are worthy to celebrate it this year, so may we perform it in the future years. O pure one in heaven above, restore the congregation of Israel in your love. Speedily lead your redeemed people to Zion in joy. Next year in Jerusalem, l'shana haba'ah b'yerushalayim. And let's also pray that next year we're together again, live and in person. Page 44, and Carol will remember that this is my mom's favorite song, Adir Hu. I will do the first paragraph, and then we will do the first paragraph, the last paragraph, and then we'll do the last paragraph in, in, in English. Adir Hu, Adir Hu, Yivne Beito Bekaro, Bimhera, Bimhera. Be a menu be caro el bene el bene bene be carbe caro last stanza cado shu rahum hu sad shadai hu taki hu yvne be to be caro bin hera bin hera be a menu be caro El bene, el bene, bene beit kabekaro. Last paragraph together in English. He who is holy, merciful, all powerful, almighty, may he soon rebuild his temple. Speedily, speedily, in our days soon. O oh God, rebuild, O oh God, rebuild, rebuild your temple soon. Yes, there is a wish that the temple be reconstructed, but I'm going to take a slightly different stand on this one, and that is, let us please be free and get the all clear, so that for those of us who do go to temple, there are temples there with open doors, waiting to greet us, waiting to have us. Well, we're almost coming to the end, and it is at this time where the rabbis, when they put this together, they said, you know what? 
The Jews, when they're done, they're going to go home. They are. But they had a nice Jewish experience. They relived Judaism. But what do they know about Judaism? So they put a song in here called Echad Miodea, which explains at least 13 things having to do with Judaism. And they made a nice song out of it. So at least we remember what it means to be Jewish and what some of the symbols are. So I'm going to do the first uh, paragraph on page 45 in Hebrew. I'm going to do the last paragraph on page 46 in Hebrew. And then, to, uh, I'm sorry, scratch that. The last paragraph on page 47 before Hadgadja, also known as line 6, and then we'll do the English together uh, on line page 47. Echad mi yodeheya, echad ni yodeheya, echad eloheinu shema shamayim uva aretz. Page 47. Excuse me, line 6. Shlosha sab mi yodeheya, shlosha sab mi yodeheya, Shlosha sab mi daya, shenayam asak shivtaya, echad asak kolfaya, asara di hebraya, tisha yerche leida, shemona yemei mila, shiva yemei shabata, shisha sidwe mishna, chamiche chumche tora, arba ima od, shlosha ahavod, shnei luchot habrit, echad eloheinu, sheva shabayim, uva aret. We continue on page 47, line 6. Who knows 13? Let's all do this together. Who knows 13? I know 13. 13 are God's attributes. 12 are the tribes of the Torah. 11 are the stars in Joseph's dream. 10 are the commandments on ABC last Sunday night. 9 are the months of childbirth. 8 are the days before circumcision. Seven are the days of the week. Six are the sections of the Mishnah. Five are the books of the Torah. Four are the matriarchs. There are, there, pardon me, four are the matriarchs. Three are the patriarchs. Two are the tablets of the covenant. One is our God and heaven on earth. There's another translation that I picked up on. I'm going to do this very quickly. And then the last song and we're done. I'm within my 16 and a half minutes. Here we go. Who knows about Passover? One, the Passover offering brought once a year. Two times the food is dipped. Three matzahs. Four questions, children, cups of wine. The fifth cup of wine to be added when the Messiah comes. Six items on the Seder plate. And on the seventh day, the Israelites crossed the Sea of Reeds. Eight days of Passover in the Diaspora. Nine things eaten or drunk at the Seder. Ten plagues. Step number 11 is the Atikomen. Twelve corridors of water the Israelites pass through the sea. Ooh, why twelve uh, corridors of water? Why what? Twelve corridors of water in the Red Sea when it opened up. I don't know. Each tribe had their own corridor. How many tribes were there? Twelve. There it is. And 13 ver verses to Echad Miodea. And now to the last song. And by the way, if I finish before my 16 and a half minutes, next year I get to add it on. Right? No. Here we go. Chad Gadya. It's a beautiful song. It talks about the ripple effect and how at the end of everything, God is responsible. I will do the first paragraph, and then on page uh, 17, we'll do the English together. 17? I'm sorry, 48. Thank you, Carol. Page 48. Thank you. We will do the last paragraph, which starts on line 17, and then wait for a big announcement. Gotta wait for the big announcement. Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya, Tizab bin Abba Bidre Jesuze, Chad Gad Ya, Chad Gad Ya, Yatta Shunra Viachla Gad Ya, Tizab bin Abba Bidre Jesuze, Chad Gad Ya, God, God, yeah. Bottom of page 48. Beginning with the words, Then the Holy One. This is a big story going from the top to the bottom. It just encapsulate, encapsulates every paragraph. And we're going to do it responsibly. I'll start. Then came the Holy One, blessed be He. 
and slew the angel of death. That killed the shochet that slaughtered the ox. That drank the water that quenched the fire. That burned the stick that beat the dog. That bit the cat that ate the goat. My father bought for two zuzim. One little goat, one little goat. Here's the big announcement. It is customary that at the end of the Seder, the last paragraph of Chad Gadya, which is very big, the service leader has to do that entire thing in Hebrew in one breath. Some of you might know this. If I fail to do it in one breath, we have to start it all over again. Now, if we have to start it all over again, it's okay, you can get up, you can go to the restroom, but you gotta come back. Now, you might have noticed during the Seder so far, I've stumbled a couple of times. I hope I don't do it this time. And yeah, I, know, I hope you can too. <laughs> so, I didn't make up this custom, but as you know, Judaism has lots of customs. So please wish me luck. Um, this recording can go on for three hours, and I'm gonna hit my time mark, so I'm gonna try the best I can. I wanna look at the words first and study them, I want to get myself in the frame of mind. No distractions, Carol, no faces, no nothing. I'm getting there. It's all in the breathing. Look at her, she's really focusing. She's the one meditating, look at that. I'm in the zone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Seder. We really, really want to do this live next time. We hope that uh, this Seder was meaningful for you. And uh, we hope that uh, this uh, capturing gets us out of the time period we're in. I hope we had an opportunity to really reflect on what the Seder is all about, what Passover is all about, and what we're all about. So what we're going to do, we're going to conclude the way we started with Hebenu Shalom Aleichem, and then we'll be concluded. Echad Shtayim Shalosh. Hebenu Shalom Aleichem. Hey, they knew Shalom Alechem. Hey, they knew Shalom Alechem. Hey, they knew Shalom, Shalom, Shalom Alechem.